I have very aggressive goals in 2023 and I know that you do as well. I learned that effectively managing your time is what's gonna separate us from being successful versus unsuccessful in terms of exceeding our goals. So in this video, let's go over the calendar from top to bottom, as well as some of the principles and techniques that I'll be using to manage my schedule with a relatively high demanding job, as well as a few side hustles. I know this video is gonna be jam packed in value for you guys, so let's get into it. There are three non-negotiables. The first one is that I'm gonna be at my highest levels of focus and energy in the morning and that period is going to be relatively distraction free the second one is that majority of my day is going to be spent working on my full-time job I am focused I want to exceed there so I want to provide that the time and energy that's required to succeed in my role and the third is that my lowest energy levels are going to be in the evening when I have wrapped up work and I'm ready to just hit the couch and watch some reality TV. So let's break it down. My morning will be reserved for Robin Sharma's 2020 as well as 9091 rules. The 2020 Victory Hour organizes your morning to focus on reflection, movement, as well as learning. Stephen R. Covey states that all things are created twice, first in your brain, then in reality. So it's really important to journal. Then comes the 9091 rule. Now, this rule states that for the next 90 days, your first 90 minutes of your workday are going to be spent on the single most important project of your life, not your work's life, of your life. During this time period is where I'll focus on my side hustles and any other projects that I have on the go that is not related to my full-time job. I'm not gonna end this session until I've built myself a Hemingway bridge. Now, Hemingway is a writer and he would not stop his writing sessions until he knew what was coming next in his story or his project. So the same thing applies to this schedule in this 90 minute session in that I'm not going to stop until I know what I want to do when I pick up that pencil or that keyboard in the evening to start working on my project again. This is really important so that you can give yourself a lead way and not spend several minutes going on a loop and trying to figure out what you want to do next or where you need to pick off on something. Now we progress through our victory hour as well as the 90 minutes of the single most product of our life. We should be at our work day. Here you can use techniques like the Pomodoro technique or the 60-10, which is where you spend 60 minutes focusing on your work and then another 10 minutes of rest is completely up to you and how you manage your work schedule. However, I know for me, I progress more similarly towards the 60-10 rule and all my meals within that day should be covered already because I spend the weekends meal prepping. This way, I don't have to worry about what meals are coming next, I don't order out, and I can stay focused on the projects and the goals at hand without having to run to the kitchen and spend hours cooking every day. And finally is the evening. And as I stated previously, this is where our energy levels are just gonna be really, really low. During this time, I typically wanna catch up on my reality shows, whether it be The Real Housewives or The Circle, 90 Day Fiance, you name it, I watch it. However, not this year because why? we've got goals. Once we've wrapped up our workday, we're going to get what's called a second win. We're gonna spend 30 to 60 minutes doing some type of physical activity, be it a walk where you can go watch those reality shows, that's called habit stacking, or something that's just gonna get your heart rate going and your serotonin levels up and ready to tackle the next portion of your day. Yes, we are still going with our work day. After you're done getting your second win, Wind, you've got that breather, your serotonin levels are up again. Now you pick up what you've left off and you've built your bridge towards in the morning, right? If you remember, we talked about the Hemingway Bridge where you don't start that first session until you know exactly what's coming next. So now that we've built our bridge there in the evening, after we get our second wind, we're picking up what we've already stated to be coming next. Now, it's completely up to you how much time you allocate towards this in the evening. I understand that by this point, we are literally already at almost 10 hours of work. And of course, it depends how many hours in a day you work your regular nine to five or whatever the case may be. So after that second wind, we're picking up, we have crossed the Hemingway Bridge and we're ready to get back in there. During this time, I'll start working on projects again 
or I will do other things like sharpening the saw, which is, if you haven't heard this term yet, it, you are the saw. The saw is what cuts and paves your way through life. They are paving your journey. And to be able to adequately do so, successfully do so, and consistently do so, you need to take care of you, which is the saw. So these can be things you deem important to your physical, mental, and spiritual well-being that are outside your typical routine. You can do these daily if you want. However, the overall suggestion is to ensure that you're doing these at least twice a week, whether it be during your regular work week or on the weekends, for instance. So after you've gotten your second win, you can see that there are various tasks that you can pick up, uh, namely the project in which you built your Hemingway bridge bridge to, sharpening the saw, and more. Now you're probably wondering how we can adequately use the loads of time on the weekends, which is typically filled with distractions depending on how good your social life is. Mine personally isn't. So I got a lot of time on my hands, which in my opinion right now is a good thing while I get organized and uh, progress with this schedule. So. On the weekends, I have spent it making sure my living space is in order. So I'm doing my meal prep, I am cleaning my sheets, I am doing a household bathroom cleans, the whole nine yards, so that as I progress through the week, I have a nice clean space that I can work with. Not only that, but I am batching and filming content. I've realized through the past year of being on social media, uh, where I was able to grow my own personal accounts, over 150,000 followers within a year, that doing this throughout the week while I have to work as well just isn't sustainable for me. So I was trying to do that all last year and I found myself taking, you know, month long breaks, which I don't want to do this year. I want to stay consistent. So filming, scripting, filming and editing on the weekend is something that I like to do as well. And finally, the weekend is great for picking up any loose ends that you had throughout the week or getting organized for your week ahead in terms of goal setting, task lists, etc. Let me know in the comments what you guys do to organize your time and if any of these principles, techniques and examples are going to be helpful for you in pursuing your 2023 goals. I really appreciate you guys watching and make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.